So we've got our drums and bass. Let's now add a lead type sound to this. So you could either select group B and add the next sound instrument to one of these sound slots on group B, or you can pick the next group along, for example, and place it on one of these sound slots. So that's what I'm going to do. I um, just need to make sure, remember, we had groups soloed and muted uh, in previous videos. So if you look over to the software, you can see all but groups A and B are muted at the moment. So I'm going to select group C, in fact, hold mute and just unmute group C like that. You can see you get the blue coloration on the software now to indicate that it's become activated. Still won't light up on the hardware just yet because uh, we've not got anything loaded into group C. So pick a sound slot, hit browse. We're going for a sound again. We're going for instruments, type. We're going to go for lead, subtype. I'm going to select chords. I'm just going to load up this one called Electro Leader. With the sound slot selected, we can go into keyboard pad mode. Come out of browse mode. So there's the root note from the, the bass pattern. We're just going to keyboard pad mode. You can see the notes that have been played. So a good starting point would be to experiment with those same notes for the lead sound. Just have a play around the root note. Remember you've got your minor third, minor seventh, but there are other notes that work well as uh, in addition to that. So just have a bit of a play around. Let's make a pattern for those. So I'm going to hold pattern, hit one of the pattern buttons. And let's make this a little bit longer. Let's make it uh, hold down pattern again. Let's make it four bars in length. Now we haven't got the entire uh, pattern grid on the screen there. If you want to see exactly what you're doing, we need to zoom out a little bit on that pattern. So I'm going to hold the navigate button. And then you've got the option of zooming and scrolling the scenes, which is the upper part of the interface, or zooming and scrolling uh, the lower arrangement, the pattern section. So you see that um, Rotary number five zooms in and out on the pattern. Rotary number six moves you left and right. So here you go, we've got the, the entire uh, length of the pattern on the screen there, we can see what we're doing. Now, in addition to being able to quantize after the event, we can also quantize as we're recording notes in. So it saves you having to do it afterwards. Hold this grid button and then rotary number one here selects whether there's no quantization, automatic quantization, whether we're quantizing when we're recording or when we're playing and recording. So I'm just going to turn it around there so that any note that I play in now on this lead sound is going to be automatically quantized. So let's just have a bit of a play around. We can always remember delete stuff and start again. We're going to hit record. So I'm happy with that. Let's look at some of the ways that we can edit this sound. And um, the first way of which is to adjust the velocity. If you look to the lower part of the pattern section of the interface, you see there's loads of vertical stalks. 
each slightly differing in height. That is where the velocity or how hard I've hit the pad has been recorded. Now, more often than not, the velocity of the note that's entered equals the volume of the note that you, that you hear back. Velocity can also control a number of different parameters, um, but in this case, we'll just solo group C. You can hear that the velocity of note is affecting the volume. So let's take a look now at how we can adjust these. So the first way that we can control the velocities that we're hearing back um, is actually using pad mode. You can pick this option button number four, which is called fix velocity. So I'm going to press that and then we can choose which velocity the pads are going to transmit using rotary control number four. You've got values of zero right up to 127. So for argument's sake, let's set this around 100. And now, whichever pad I press, regardless of how hard I'm hitting the pad, you can hear it's always going to transmit that same velocity. So hold pad mode, press button number four to get fixed velocity. I'm just going to turn that off. So that's how you could control the velocities that are being entered. Now let's look at how we can uh, take control of them and adjust them once they've been recorded in. So what I'm going to do is hold down select, press button two, which is events. And I'm going to press pad nine there, which is the sound slot where the instrument is loaded. You can see on the software that all the note events for that pattern have been selected. So with the select button still held down, what I can do is turn this main volume rotary control. You notice that the velocity stalks are all moving vertically. Now if I want to level those out, you can see they're all uh, slightly different uh, velocities. If you want to make them a nice consistent level, what you can do is Turn the rotary control all around, all the way around to the right. Keep going, and eventually it'll flatten all those stalks out at um, the full value of 127. Once you've done that, you can turn it down, up or down to your desired velocity. I'm just going to undo that. So currently, all those will be playing back at the same volume because they've all got the same velocity values. Just let me undo that come out of keyboard pad mode. What we can also do is affect the volume of the sound slot as a whole. So rather than individual velocities, we can hold the sound slot, turn that same volume control, and can you see just to the left hand side of the pattern editor, in line with where it says number nine electro leader, you can see the volume for that sound slot being attenuated. Here, I just accidentally touched the rotary control next to that, which is pitch. And that's how you can pitch the sound slot up and down as well. One more, we can adjust the volume at group level as well. So we can hold A, B, or C, or hold C in this case. We can turn that same volume control, and you can see up in the scene editor next to group C, you've got a volume control which has been attenuated there. You can also do that just by clicking and dragging with the mouse as well. Let me just go back into keyboard pad mode, group C. Select events. Now I can tap sound slot number nine to select all and deselect all. I can use rotary five and six and seven and eight to select specific specific notes. I can use the arrow keys up here to move between the different notes. 
So for example, that one's quite abnormally low velocity, so I can just turn that up a little bit. Now it might be quicker to, quicker to go in and do that with the mouse. So you can just uh, drag a drag a box around with the mouse like this. Get hold of the velocity stalks and just drag those vertically in that fashion. But that's how you can affect velocity. Finally, I'd just like to take a look at how we can affect how much the velocity is affecting the volume. And we'll find this in the actual instrument parameters. So we're going to take a first look at what's called the modules section. Let's just come out of pad mode. So make sure that you're not in browse mode. Make sure that button's off. And then you can press button number four, which is called modules. Now over here on the right LCD display, you've got four module slots now. Now the first module slot is taken up by the instrument, in this case, sampler. And then you've got three module slot spaces for effect units. So per sound slot, you could have one instrument and three effects. You could also add, rather than having sound selected if we press group, you can also have four effect units per group. And if we press master, you can also have four effect units on uh, the master section as well. And um, let's just go back to the sound because I'd like to take a look at the sampler parameters. Now, all the different parameters of the sampler can be accessed using the arrow keys here. It tells you in the right hand LCD display, you've got six pages of parameters all of which can be modulated by these rotary controls one to eight. So page one out of six, two out of six, and so on and so forth. Now the page I am looking for is actually the, the last page, page six. And in the left hand LCD display here, it says velocity destination. So this decides the velocities that I enter, that I record in, what are they going to affect? Now, as we've heard at the moment, it's affecting volume, which is rotary control number four, and it's doing that 100%. We can also get uh, velocity to affect things like the cutoff of the filter, so how bright or dull the sound sounds. We'll come back to filters in a moment. The decay, how long it takes for the sound to die away. The start of the sample as well. We can adjust the start point of the, uh, the sample, the sound that's been played, uh, according to the velocity that gets entered. So I'm just going to solo group C. You can hear the different velocities are affecting volume. Let me just turn that down to zero. So now you can hear, even though there's different velocities programmed in, they're not affecting the volume. That will be affecting the decay although that's dependent on something called the volume envelope, which we'll take a look at in a moment. You can hear now the velocity is opening and closing something called the filter. You're getting a slightly brighter or duller sound depending on the velocity. So that's how we can affect the velocity in a number of different ways and we've seen how that can be used to control different parameters. Let's go back to this thing called the filter now. So in fact I'm going to reset cutoff to zero. I'm just going to make sure that all these, uh, in fact let's just turn it up just a little bit on the volume just to give us a little bit of dynamic variation in there. I'm going to use these arrow keys to go back to page three out of six, where on the left hand side you've got the effects that are built into the sampler instrument, and on the right hand side you've got the filter section. So this is where we can start to shape the sound a little bit using effects, using filters, make it just a little bit more interesting.
So two main controls of a filter. You've got the cutoff and the resonance. Now filter, as the name suggests, it filters off different frequencies from the sound. So at the moment I've got something called LP2 selected, that's called low pass filter. And that will filter off all the high end frequencies and just leave us with the bass end. And as I turn the filter round to the right, we'll get more and more of the higher frequencies back into the sound. The resonance is a control for adding a bit of definition to the filter. It's where you get your sort of acidy type sounds from. HP high pass does the opposite gets rid of all the bass end sounds and just leaves you with the, the top end. But just something to have a bit of a play around with. I'm going to leave it as... I'm going to leave it as low pass. So let's now add even more depth to this sound by adding some uh, effect devices in the subsequent module slots.